hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue talking about the subject of SMR shingled magnetic recording hard drives and CMR and PMR conventional magnetic recording and perpendicular magnetic recording in 2021. For those of you that aren't aware last year there was a big hoo-ha about SMR drives and, and precisely WD Red being basically shown to be utilizing SMR drives. Now, one of the biggest problems about this whole thing that came out, because it really got picked up on in mid to late 2019, wasn't so much that WD were using SMR drives. It was that they were using them and not telling anyone, which is a big big no-no for a number of people out there that want to know what they're buying. And when you advertise a hard drive for NAS systems and people are buying and spending a lot of money on NAS systems, they want to know that the drives they're getting are precisely what they think they are. And because WD didn't really tell anyone or make it incredibly clear that they were SMR drives, a number of users came away from it feeling slightly betrayed, a little bit lied to. But today I want to, in 2021, talk about SMR drives once again. I want to talk about what they are, what is the difference between those and CMR and PMR drives, are there other methods out there being utilised, are they still in the market, and should you use them in any shape or form. So, if you aren't already aware, I've already done a bunch of videos, performance testing, going through this whole thing with WD Reg drives. I do recommend you check them out, hopefully they're linked to in the description. But First, let's talk about what these are, PMR, CMR, and SMR. So, firstly, CMR and PMR. Again, conventional magnetic recording and perpendicular magnetic recording. It is how data is put on the platters. Inside a hard drive, let's grab one right there. That would have been good to have it ready for the filming. Inside any hard drive are these cylindrical disks. I'm sorry about the light going a bit crazy. And on these disks are data libs. When the data is applied to these, it is in circles. The data is written onto these um, these platters inside. Larger drives have more platters. And then this little arm here moves up and down on the drive, I'm trying to make sure the light doesn't go crazy. That reads the data from the disk. And the lines of the data all go round on each platter with the inside of the drive having a controller and a firmware tailored inside that keeps an index of where all the data is so the arm can find the data. Over time, as you delete data, the data is spread out over the disks, and you occasionally may need to defragment or do some other stuff with your RAID to ensure that all the data is as efficiently spread across the disk as possible in nice blocks so it can be accessed that little bit quicker. Conventional magnetic recording and perpendicular magnetic recording apply data on these disks quite evenly and the data is put in those lines, in those grooves, on each platter, nice and straightforwardly, and then you get the capacity. So why on earth do we need a different way of doing it? They've, you know, they've really peaked it as good as it can go. They've gone with helium sealing to maintain temperatures and pressure. They've gone ahead and added more efficient and uh, more usable platters inside with larger disks. And even the interfaces, the controller and the cache being utilized is pretty much as good as it gets. So why the big hoo-ha? What is SMR? Well, shingle magnetic recording is pretty much the same thing. But when the data is applied to these platters, the cylindrical disks inside um, via magnetism, it's applied in overlapping systems. There is more write happening over the read. Now, there is a larger amount of cache inside, the reason being that occasionally when the drive is idle, the system has to reorganize the data on those. It was a way with regards to SMR to get larger capacity storage on these platters inside. It was one of the early methods where we saw things like the Seagate Archive ATB single SMR drive come to the market, not for NAS. We'll touch on to that later. Why, you know, why is that problematic? Well, if you're utilizing a drive, <clears throat> what will happen is if you're writing data on a NAS that's on 24-7, maybe for surveillance or business use, one way or another, it's never given an opportunity to go idle then when does the drive get to reorganize that data? And if it doesn't get a chance to reorganize the data, you can hit a problem down the line. Moreover, when you're, if you have a failed drive, which of course can happen, nothing is perfect. If you've got multiple SMR drives in a RAID configuration with a disk being read and written to all the time, once you install a new drive to try to recover your data, 
you are putting a lot of pressure on that disc. On top of that, the resync or rebuild or any kind of restructuring of the data inside those can take ages. And that is pretty much one of the biggest reasons that people do not recommend SMR drives in network attached storage because they are not designed for 24 seven use. They are not designed for that RAID recovery. And if you are overworking those drives, if you have a RAID recovery, there's a, you know, statistically a higher possibility that another drive will fail in those larger arrays. And that was one of the biggest problems that people had with SMR drives in the past and indeed the present. Whether it's in EXT4, BTRFS or ZFS file systems, the principle remains the same. So, SMR, why are we still seeing it? Why is it still around if it's so bad? Well, SMR actually arrives in different versions. And WD use DM SMR, Drive Managed SMR. And it means the drive itself takes care of the overlap and reorganization of the data being applied to those platters. It still requires um, utility of a little bit of idle time in order to do that. But unlike a lot of other SMR drives that arrived in the scene a few years ago that were system managed SMR or SM SMR, Drive Manager SMR is generally better overall because you don't have to rely on the system trying to take breaks or software that's installed within the system handling the RAID configuration to have to deal with the overlapping of data there. So again, they are using Drive Manager SMR and in some ways you can kind of get away with it. But it's worth highlighting that in spite of that, SMR drives I would still not recommend in larger arrays. When should you use an SMR drive? And by that I mean when, if you are using them, is it sort of okay? Well, I would say an SMR hard drive in a NAS situation, min, um, no, maximum a two bay. I would not use, personally, an SMR drive in anything more than a two bay NAS. Largely because of the RAID arrangement of a two bay NAS, whether you're using RAID zero or RAID one, generally it means that the drives aren't overlapping much. If you use a spanning RAID uh, in a RAID zero or a RAID one, they are still, in a way, working independently and you still have a data protection there, but rather than data being spread across them, you have got that um, simultaneous utility. So although I still don't really recommend SMR drives being utilized in network attached storage use, if you are looking for a cheaper drive or you are running a very small setup that has plenty of idle time and it's not constantly accessed 24 seven, that's one of the few occasions where I think you can sort of get away with SMR drives. But even then, I wouldn't really recommend them. They're just not the best kind of drive for your network attached storage. And you shouldn't really look at how much drives or NASs cost. You should look at how much it would cost you personally or financially to lose that data. That should be your spend. You know, how much you don't want to lose something. So SMR, CMR, PMR, is that it? Is that all we've got to think about? Well, newer generations of hard drives coming because of the pandemic slightly delayed, but towards the mid end of this year, 2021, we are seeing two newer kinds of magnetic recordings start to rise. Around helium technology and stuff like that in the background, we are seeing HAMR and EAMR, heat assisted magnetic recording predominantly from Seagate and energy assisted magnetic recording from WD. They both utilize a system of um, manipulating the platters using heat or energy to expand the space and ultimately get more data in there. We're starting to see 18, 20 and even larger drives in data sheet form, occasionally leaked, be mentioned uh, coming forward. So the knowledge on EAS, um, EAMR and um, HAMR is still compared with the other three that we just talked about, still pretty early stages. It's, you know, the white sheets are out there, the tech specs, the patents, it's all pretty predominant and we've seen drives out in the wild, but it's still not enough known about that. And I would maybe hold back a little bit to see how things smell out on those because they're still quite green compared to CMR and PMR drives, which are, have been king for decades. Thank you so much for watching. Do bear in mind in the description, there's a link to an article on NAS Compares where I list pretty much all the usable drives for network attached storage and servers. 
listing whether they are PMR and PMR and CMR are basically the same thing or they are SMR based. So I recommend you check that article out. Otherwise, click like. If you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to stay abreast of things to do with data storage. And I will see you next time.